This is a bit confusing, but in the last episode, we went to the vet in Rio Gallegos to get the pet paperwork to cross the border from Argentina into Chile. We, work, we woke up early this morning and drove about an hour from Rio Gallegos to the Argentina-Chile border. We crossed the border and drove about an hour to the ferry crossing of the Magellan Strait where we took the ferry onto the island of Tierra del Fuego in Chile. Now, that happened around midday today, but it was all in the last episode. Get it? So this episode picks up where we're approaching the Chile-Argentina border on our way to Rio Grande, where we get some big surprises. One super cool and one real bummer. Long story short, today has already been a long day and we still have another border to cross. We've been driving and driving and driving and we are seven minutes from our next border crossing. I know we just checked into Chile but it's time to check out. So we'll see how long the line is when we get there and start kind of figuring out the rest of our schedule. But we may sleep by one of these borders. It's been a long day. Border crossing number two, about to get underway. So you park here on the side of the road and we walk up to this building and we start the checkout process. We are officially checked out of Chile. Now we gotta go check in to Argentina again. Whew. What a day, guys. I think as soon as we cross over into Argentina, we're gonna look for a campsite. Not making it to the big grocery store tonight. It's been too long of a day. All right, we have made it to the border point to check back in to the very southern part of Argentina. Let's go get this done, guys. Woohoohoo! FYI, it is 4.20. We have been going hard since 7 this morning. Alright, the van is in. We are in. This building here to the left, that's immigration and the aduana. And then over here in the median, that's where the kitty cats got checked in. It's official. We're back in Argentina and it is windy. And we see a gas station. I think that's where we're headed to park right now. It has been a long couple of days and today was a really long day. To give y'all an idea of all the running around you do on a border crossing day, I just checked my Fitbit and walked 1.8 miles today. Wow! <laughs> and she was walking very quickly, yes. I might add. You gotta walk fast so you beat all the people in line. But we crossed two borders today, that's a first. We are camping at a gas station because we're wore out. And I just want to say this. I am super excited we made it down to Tierra del Fuego. In fact, I was sitting here messaging all my family and friends because I am fired up. We're not to the end of the world yet. We're getting close. We're getting closer. It's only three and a half hours away. <laughs> Good morning from a gas station camp spot right next to the Argentina border down here in Tierra del Fuego. It is obviously a very popular campsite for crossing the border <laughs> and a popular camp spot for some kitties to take a walk. If you didn't watch our last video, we spent a whole entire day crossing two borders. It was a long day, a stressful day, and these guys deserve a walk this morning. And Vanna has spotted Kurt. So let's go find him. <laughs> Gee, what are you doing, huh? What are you doing? Do you have a nice walk? 
Let's see if we can get a count, guys. One band, that's ours. Two, three, four, five, six, seven over here to the left of me. Let's see, eight. Uh, I'm counting 11, maybe 12 vans, guys. But let's get these kitties back to the van. The wind is starting to pick up. She's ready to go home. 230 per liter. So if you take that times four, that's what, about 920, I believe. I did that math on the fly. 920 is a little over, right? well, right around $3 a gallon for diesel. All right, snow's over there burning up the calculator. Since we left Buenos Aires, we have gone around 1,800 miles. That is about 150 gallons of gas or diesel. And Kurt just said it's $3 here. Is that a week we've been gone? We've been back on the road a little over a week. Does that sound right? $450 on fuel? Yeah. Oh, ouch. Definitely our biggest expense. Now, in our defense, yes, that's a lot of money, but we have really been putting the mileage in. Uh, because if you remember from our last video, we were running out of time on our Argentina visa. But right now, with the way fuel prices are still around the world, we can't complain too much at $3. No. Could be a lot more per gallon. But it's time to go burn some more diesel, so we're hitting the road. the car wash and we made it in we're finally getting the beast all cleaned up it is much needed look at this so we made it to the town of Rio Grande Grande G-R-E-N-D-E and it's a little town maybe about three hours out of Ushuaia but one of the unique things we saw right when we pulled in is all these sort of four-story apartment buildings and they're all run all through here they kind of have different colors and maybe different decorations but other than that they're all kind of shaped similarly and it just has a unique architecture in the city that we really haven't seen any place else i'll let you check it out and be the judge of what you think about it but we came to the city because we have a couple things to do if you can see down there is the carry for we had to throw out all our food. We need cat food and other stuff like that. <sighs> Look at this, shaping up, guys. Wow, looking good. Clean inside and outside. Pretty stoked. These guys have been pretty efficient and uh, very nice and cool. Worked this in pretty quickly. And uh, yeah, we're about done. Look at that. The car is washed. We went and picked up cat food and other necessities at the big supermarket. We are still looking for a place with some good chicken and some fresh veggies to buy. The kitties are about to get some food. And the day is moving along. That's our van in the reflection of a window for a giant tire shop because we have encountered yet another pain in the butt thing to deal with on the road. But if this kind of journey was easy, everybody would do it. Let me get out and show y'all what's going on. Tire looks perfectly good, right? Probably needs to be replaced in several months. But when we were in the grocery store parking lot, look at that. Look at that big chunk of tread out. Ugh. 
It's on the bottom front. So cuatro. Hmm. Oh. Cuatro. Sí, hay que cambiar las cuatro. Sí. ¿Sí? Eh, esta marca, Goodyear, sí. la vende Mariano, eh, otra comería, la tiene, otro local. ¿En Ushuaia? No, no, acá, acá. Okay. Eh, Mariano Costa se llama. So unfortunately, this is the same problem we've been having all the way since Peru. If you guys remember in Peru, someone slid under our van while we were in the store, stole our spare tire. We have not been able to find a rim. And we also needed front tires. So we've kind of been looking for tires since we left there. And they just don't have the same size that we have. So we have a 215, 85R, whatever and they only have 80s. So anyway, we're really struggling to find tires that we need, but with this damage, we gotta figure something out. So we'll see what happens. But the nice man at this store did send us to another place across town that carries Goodyear's. Maybe they have the right size. He didn't have anything here that would help us. We're on the hunt. Tire shop number two. Uh, the guy came out and looked. Let's see what they come up with. I could definitely tell they don't have the exact same tire. So we'll see what they find when they're inside. It's really just a messed up situation. We can't get the right size tires in Argentina. It, that one tire is so burgered up. We need a new tire. But the only size tire, the only tires they have are different. So we have a dually. So really if we replace one, with a different size, we need to replace them all. And to be honest with you, the tire they have, the tires, the new tires we just got in front because we absolutely needed are different sized as well. They're different than the ones here. Uh -huh. So we end up with the front tires being different than the four back tires. All the four back tires would be the same, but there's a nominal difference in the size. So, and we're in Argentina, so inflation's a huge problem here. And things like tires and anything else that's imported, a lot of stuff is super expensive. So do we want to go see if the Pirelli place is open and see what they have? He called. We can go over there and see. Oh, well, he called. I mean, he can put these tires on. We can have four new tires in about two hours. I think it's just going to be, we're going to have to bite the bullet. At least it will be safe. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. It's not a good option, but it's not like we have good options. I think a lot of people don't understand when you're traveling to other countries, it's, you just don't have the options you have in the U.S. You yeah. just don't have the, you kind of got to deal with what you can get. Okay, the decision has been made. We are getting four brand new tires on the back of our van. They will all be the same size and they will be extremely close to the same size of our two new tires that are on the front of the van that we got in Buenos Aires. So it'll be okay. Our mismatched tires will be from the front to the back and, and that'll have to work because y'all saw the chunk in the tire. We can't keep driving and uh, it's what we got to do. And then the bad thing, a thousand dollars. So that's a lot of fun, but tires, mechanical stuff, fuel. It's all needed to keep this baby running down the road. So it's what we got to do. And we knew new tires were coming anyway. We just thought we could get, you know, maybe up to Chile or Paraguay, get a few more thousand miles on those back tires because they're not that bad. But it is what it is. We will have six brand new shiny tires, two from Buenos Aires, four from right here in Rio Grande. And we won't have to worry about tires anymore. Okay, we have new feet on the van. They look pretty. <laughs> All right, there's the culprit, guys. 
Got the thread showing through. We don't know what did it, but it's a big chunk out of our tire. But we're all good now. Gracias. <laughs> all right, it's time for the big reveal. <laughs> we Surprise. are going to meet some people that we've never met before. However, they are prolific <laughs> iOverlander posters. Which is and amazing. Like, I can remember their posts from when we very first started coming through, I think, Mexico and Central America. And then here recently, we kind of been right on their track. So they've been posting different spots and we've been right behind them. And so today we're going to have the fortune of meeting up with fellow travelers. We really don't know much about them other than they've been on the road longer than us. Yeah, so they seem to like the same kind of camp spots and stuff that we do, and it's his birthday, so we're gonna go to a Mexican restaurant and celebrate with a beer. There you go. Done it again. We had something really fun and exciting to do, and we were having so much fun, we did not share it with you. I know we told y'all we were going to go and meet Geneva and Mike, some fellow travelers who we had never met in person, but had bumped into on some online forums, mainly iOverlander, all along the way. And uh, we did go meet them for dinner. We had, uh, Kurt had a birthday beer, it was Mike's, Mike's birthday, and we sat there and we talked and we chatted and we shared stories for three or four hours, and we didn't film any of it. And um, I do have to say, those guys were truly beautiful people. Yeah. They were nice, enjoyed hanging out with other travelers. And uh, it just always turns out we have a lot in common with travelers. We do, we do. So then we were headed to a campsite there in town, but Geneva told us that they had discovered this nice little spot just outside of town. It is technically a gas station parking lot, but we're behind it on a pond. And she says in the morning there will be lots of beautiful birds here. So we have followed them back here. And when we did that, we got a quick tour of their rig, which is a truck camper. And they did a lot of custom work on that thing. Uh, they took the bed off the truck, did some crazy special welding to hook it on there. They have cool storage. They have really fine-tuned that thing to fit them and to fit traveling in Central and South America. You can tell they're old experts at this stuff. Not old, just experts. seasoned. <laughs> the big thing here is this this used to be a fridge so we made this into geneva's um, closet closet okay. and traded it out for this or not traded it but put this angle fridge in how do you like that thing love it that doesn't run the full hour so you know it's Less. About what kind of fridge is it again angle? angle do you mind if you can you open it yeah can we see yeah. peek in so so you look at it, you go, wow, that's not very much space. Oh, it goes deep. Deep, deep. Yeah. Deep. You can put full two liter bottles in, in there. there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. That's awesome. So it does nice. it for us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then there's your sink. There's your cars, three right? burner gas. I have one burner, by the way, electrics. Oh, so. so three burners. Um, this is. Microwave? No. Nope. Oh, your pantry. Yeah. Don't have a I this love a that pantry. This show, was... show them the drawers in the pantry. Oh, yeah. They just. Oh, that's nice. This I got a pantry envy. Okay. Pantry envy. <laughs> it's the little thing. Well, yeah, these, nice. these things are so much wider than a sprinter van. Yeah. And so the you just. curve towards the top, so. The other one, yeah. the other fun one is that big oak drawer, and these I found these on Etsy. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh yeah. Just more. Oh, they come down. Oh. Yeah, that's so oh, wow. that oil drawer. Oops. Yeah, my oil and my yeah. drawer. Yeah. Mike, will you pull the big one? Oh yeah. So. Like they they have a map one. wall. So, oh, oh look, Kurt, it tilts. They tilt. So there's a, a white plastic thing back in there. Just the tilt that rotates. Oh. So it rides out, it glides out in the track, and then it rotates. And then we also that was closed. Oh, and then, then in the shower, you even put a little drawer up there on top. Yeah, yeah. 
But we had a lot of fun. We're camping here. We'll likely see them for some coffee in the morning. She does a great blog. If you're interested in reading some more about somebody else's perspective on this journey, I will put a link to her website in the description of this video. But more kind people that we meet along the way. These just happen to also be from the United States. They did. And it's getting late. The sun is going down over this little lake in front of us. And that's kind of what you're seeing in our face. Yeah. But I don't know if we'll be up for the sunset, no, will we? Because I late. think the sun sets <laughs> at like 1030 now. The farther south we go, the later it gets. Last night we didn't make it. I don't think we'll make it tonight. I think it's like 940 and the sun is far from setting. So no sunset shots for you guys for quite a while. But we'll see you first thing in the morning. Oh, it's so windy out here that she won't come out. But look at Panna. She is having a ball in this wind. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark? From so far away, show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of? How come the sky sometimes hides behind the clouds? Maybe it's just like me, a little bit scared of heights. Why does the rain always keep on pouring down when it's gray outside? wonder yeah it makes me wonder it really makes me wonder Ooh, I wonder how come the trees get undressed when it's cold and don't they miss the leaves they left behind could it be to make the ground shine like cold until winter comes? Until winter comes? Until winter comes? It really makes me wonder. Yeah, it makes me wonder. Really we are pulling out of our campsite. We have said goodbye to our new traveling friends. Geneva and Mike. We got about an hour until we get where we think our campsite is going to be. And uh, every day we get a little bit closer to the end of the world and the end of the Pan American Highway. It's crazy. We're sort of slowing down to savor it yeah. a little bit. We had to hurry a little bit because our visas were going to expire in Argentina. But we don't have to hurry so much now. So let's go find some fun and pretty stuff. We just came around the curve through a tunnel of much bigger and greener trees. And there are mountains on the horizon. Things are changing and they're changing <laughs> quickly. Yes, they are. Now, I don't think it'll show up in here, but off in the far distance, there's a couple of them that definitely do have a little snow on them. It is summertime down here, but we are very, very far south. I don't know what kind of mountains we're coming up on, <laughs> but that checkpoint was a DUI checkpoint. We pulled up, we got pulled over. He was very kind, but he had a breathalyzer. Kurt had to breathe into it. Everything was cool. We headed on down the road. Done. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!